Good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. It's good to have all of you with us out there on the out there on the internet, wherever you might be. Glad you are spending this Good Friday with us. I do not have uh, many announcements to make at all tonight as we begin. The only thing that I do want to say is that our Easter service is available for you uh, for you to watch. And of course, it's this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday, April the 12th. And it will be available on our church website at 9.45 a.m. So you can view that on the website. You can also view that on our church YouTube page and also on our Facebook page. And I would encourage you to tune in, uh, invite your family, uh, make sure that your friends know about it. Even though we are not able to get together in person on Easter Sunday, we want to still worship the Lord. It is Resurrection Sunday, and so it's a great high moment in the life of the church, the greatest moment really in the year for the people of God. And so we encourage you, please, to, turn, to tune in uh, to view the service this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday. Bow with me as we pray. Our Father, we do thank you for this time to come together tonight and to, uh, to focus upon the cross. Uh, Father, we pray that it would be first and foremost in our minds and our hearts tonight. And Father, it was a cruel thing that our Lord endured, but it was needed. It was necessary for our salvation. And we thank you for that. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. the power of the cross. 
this next hymn and uh, this tells the entire story of Jesus and I love just the storytelling in the song but the most important part about this song is the fact that it talks about in Christ alone our hope is found there is nothing else out there in the world that can compare to Jesus and there's nothing else out there in the world that we can add to what Christ has done on the cross. We can't add to anything that saves us. It is in Christ alone. Sing along with us. In Christ alone is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jonathan and Hallie. And thanks to uh, the folks who are playing the instruments over there very, very much. Uh, what a privilege it is to gather together and to, uh, to worship the Lord. Bow with me, please, uh, in prayer as, uh, as we begin the message tonight. God, we thank you that, uh, that Jesus went to the cross in our place. And we thank you, Lord, that, that Jesus is glorified. We thank you, Lord, that because he paid the price for our sin, Lord, we don't have to do that. We simply need to place our faith in what Jesus has done. Father, we pray for those who have never received Christ as Savior. May this be the day, may this be the moment when they trust Christ. And Father, for those of us who know Christ as our Savior, I pray that we would remember his sacrifice and that it would encourage us to live for him. We ask it in his name. Amen. This is Good Friday of Holy Week. And this is the time where we focus upon the cross. We focus on the death of Christ. This is not a very pretty subject, but it is needed because the cross had to happen before the resurrection. And so tonight we will focus upon the cross. And I'll read from Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11, and actually we'll focus on just one verse. I will focus on verse 8, but I'll be reading some other scripture passages as well. So I hope you have your Bibles handy. I hope they are close by so that we can read God's Word together. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 5, we read this. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And verse 8 is the focus of our message tonight. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father title of the, the message tonight is Cross Points, and the reason I've entitled it that is because there are three points I'd like to think about related to the cross of Christ. First point is the humility of Jesus. The cross shows the humility of Jesus. Jesus' entire earthly life, from the manger to the tomb, was marked by humility we can start thinking briefly about the birth of Christ. We read about the birth in Matthew. We read about it again in Luke and, and Mark. And they tell us the story of the birth of Christ. And the birth of Christ was a very humble birth. Born to two young people, teenagers. And Jesus was born in a manger. There was no great fanfare when Jesus was born. There was no great party that was given when Jesus was born. Jesus was born and he was laid in a manger. And not many people knew about the birth of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. It was a very humble birth. And then we think about the life of Christ. Luke tells us, 
As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, the King of Kings, as he walked the earth, had no place to lay his head. For the most part, he was dependent upon those around him to take care of his physical needs. His life was a very humble life. And then we come to the topic, the subject of tonight, and that is his death. The death of Jesus was a a humble death. It was really the death of a criminal. And I'd like to go to the Gospel of Luke, and I'd like to read from Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 32, and I'm going to read all the way actually down through verse 49. I know it's a long passage, but it tells us of the death of our Lord, and it helps us to understand more about the humility of his death. So listen as I read, and read along with me, if you will, if you have your Bible close by. Scripture says, Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. So Jesus was crucified with criminals because in the eyes of the Roman government, he was a criminal. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The Savior of the world, our Christ, his clothes were being, they were gambling for his clothes. The people stood watching. The rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. So they were making fun of Christ. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read this, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus is on the cross between two criminals, included with the criminals, considered a criminal. People are there making fun of him. The people, the soldiers. One of the criminals, however, sees in Jesus something different. He sees him as a savior and calls out to Jesus. We read further. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Jesus died on the cross. 
Jesus humbled himself, took upon himself the form of a servant, a servant who died on the cross as our Savior. As Christ's followers today, we are called to live in humility just as Christ did. The word humble in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, basically means to depress, to abase, or to bring low. Humility doesn't mean that we are to be doormats for other people to walk over us, but humility means that I am to lower my opinion of myself in relationship to God. There's only one God. I am not God, and guess what? You are not God either. There's only one God. That is the God of Scripture. That is the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, the God who revealed himself in Christ. And I'm to follow him. And I'm to serve him. I'm to humble myself and become a servant of God through faith in Christ. Scripture says in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, that Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. The great leader, Moses, was a man of humility. Moses was humble. I think that you and I can, uh, can be humble as well and follow our Lord. We also to be humble in relationship to others. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, that we are to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. We are to humble ourselves in, in relationship to other people. We are to say, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? A man by the name of Hudson Taylor was scheduled to speak at a large Presbyterian church in Australia. And the moderator of the service introduced the missionary in eloquent and glowing terms. He told the large congregation all that Taylor had accomplished in China. And then presented Hudson Taylor as our illustrious guest. Taylor stood quietly for a moment and then opened his message by saying this. He said, dear friends, I am simply the little servant of an illustrious master. Well, that's humility. Christ humbled himself and he served the Father. We also see the obedience of Jesus at the cross. He became obedient. Once again, the entire life of Christ was characterized by obedience to the Father. Jesus himself said, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And that obedience of Christ is seen in an incredible way. In the Garden of Gethsemane, just shortly prior to the crucifixion, we read this. We read in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 36. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Now, from the human side, Jesus knew what he was fixing to face. He was fixing to face the pain and everything else that went with the cross. Everything leading up to the cross, the cross itself, it was going to be a terrible, terrible, painful thing that he would face. 
He said, Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was willing to obey and did obey at the cross. The obedience of Jesus is seen in an incredible way in submitting to God's will, going to the cross to die for us. As Christ followers today, we are called to live in obedience just as Christ. Now, I'm not saying that you and I are Christ. I get that. I'm not saying that. But as Christ lived in obedience to the Father, we also are to live in obedience. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3 says, This is love for God, to obey his commands. Obedience. John, Jesus said, If you love me, you will obey what I command. Obedience. A.W. Tozer said the Bible recognizes no faith that does not lead to obedience. Nor does it recognize any obedience that does not spring from faith. The two are opposite sides of the same coin. We are called to obedience. Following in the footsteps of our Lord. Third point is the death of Christ on the cross. Jesus, in humble obedience, died on the cross. He died. He did not just pass out. He did not just go to sleep from the pain and then just wake up from that sleep three days later. Scripture says that Jesus died. In Mark 15, 39, we read, when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Jesus died. And in John 19, verses 28 through 30, we read later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. That means Jesus died. I mean, like he physically died. And when Jesus died, he died for our sin. Scripture teaches us that every one of us, we are all sinners. All of us. I mean, from the most holy person you can think of, from the most wonderful person you can think of, all the way down to the person on the other end of the spectrum. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're considered good or bad by other people. Scripture says that we're all sinners. There is no one righteous, no, not one. And Scripture tells us that our sin deserves death. In essence, I should die. Because I am a sinner. Every one of us as sinners lives with the death penalty. But when Jesus went to the cross, Jesus took our sin upon himself and died in our place. An incredible thing. Jesus willingly, obediently, humbly, and Scripture even says joyfully, endured the cross for my sin and for your sin. He took upon himself the penalty of our sin. He died in our place as our sacrifice. Jesus died so we, through faith in him, can live. 
Romans 5, 8 says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm a sinner. I deserve death because of the sin in my life. But Christ died in my place. He went to the cross. He took upon himself the penalty for my sin and for your sin. And when I place my faith in what Christ has already done, the complete finished work of Christ on the cross, when I place my faith in what he did, at that moment, I'm saved. I'm a new creation. I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. I'm bound for heaven. Has there been a time in your life where you have received Christ as your Savior? Where you have called out to him, said, Christ, I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. But Christ, I'm trusting in you as my Savior. Thank you for going to the cross for me. Thank you for paying the price for my sin when I could not. Jesus, by faith. I trust you as my Savior. Has there been a time in your life when you have done that? If not, I hope you'll do that soon. I hope you invite Christ into your heart as your Savior and your Lord. As Christ's followers today, we are called to die to self. When we see the death of Christ on the cross, it reminds us that if we are Christians, we are called to die Yourself. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will save it. We are called to die to self. That means saying, okay, Christ, what is it do you want me to do with my life? Here I am, use me. I am yours, you are my Savior, you are my Lord. I just want to follow you. I want to live for you. I want to learn about you. I want to share you. I want to praise you. I want to honor you. I am called to die to self. I am called, in effect, to take up my cross daily, meaning I'm to die to self and to live for Christ. Now, I don't know about you. I don't think I'm completely there yet. Matter of fact, I know I'm not. But I pray that God will keep me in the process and teach me and help me to be more like Christ and help me to die to self so that Christ is glorified. As we reflect on the death of Christ on this Good Friday, let's remember that we are called to humility, called to obedience, even death to self so that Christ can live fully through us. Bow with me as we pray. God, thank you that we can come together. And Lord, even though the cross, even though the death of our Lord is not a pretty subject. Father, we are thankful that Jesus went to the cross and took our place. Father, I pray that if we we know Christ, that we will celebrate our new life in Christ and that we will thank him for what he has done for us. And Father, if we're not a Christian, I pray that we would take this time the time that we have right now to receive Christ as the Savior and Lord of our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jonathan and Hallie will now come to lead us in a closing chorus. Thank you for joining us for our Good Friday service. I pray that it's been a blessing to you as it has to us. Once you sing... Uh, the chorus of forever with us. Forever here.